What's up guys, welcome back. Today is day 18 of my 30 day get good challenge. Today we are at this beautiful little mountain forest overlook area. God, it's just gorgeous up here. So the plan for today is gonna to be a little bit different. What I'm gonna do is just kinda of cruise around. I'm gonna throw in some ND filters on our Nazgul XL5 here. We're just gonna cruise around, get some awesome shots. I think it should look pretty good with these ND filters. Reason I'm doing that is because I really don't want to walk all the way down there to get my quad when I crash, not if. It's a win for sure. So we're just going to have fun today. We're just going to cruise around. Through editing some of these videos here for my challenge, I've noticed that I'm kind of turning into more of a flow slash juicy pilot, which I did not think would happen. I thought I would always just be flow like drib and i've noticed that i'm doing juicy flicks and all this like weird juicy tricks got some rewinds in there it's it's just funny like how this challenge has changed the way i fly and i think that's a good thing part of it probably was i just wasn't comfortable doing that stuff before and because i'm flying every single day i'm getting so much practice in and i just get more exposure to that type of stuff i get to practice it more and I get better at it. And I mean, right now, I think I'm getting pretty good at some of the juicy tricks. So I'm trying to incorporate those into my normal flowy style of flying. I am no longer using any GoPro um, hyper smooth or real steady or anything like that. I don't, I don't want to rely on that to get smooth footage. I really believe that it's just a crutch. You don't see the best pilots out there using any stabilization. The way they get it so smooth is by tuning and by just making the quad smoother in general. But in my case here, I got the I still have my hard plastic GoPro mounts and I think that's really limiting me. I do need to get some TPU of some sort in there to just damp out that vibration a little bit cuz you guys can probably tell in some of the more recent videos it's it has been a little bit shakier even in straight and level flight. So it can't be me if it's straight and level. It's got to be something on the quad, something mechanical that's causing that, and probably tuning as well. So I do plan to get into tuning it a little bit more because I really haven't done any tuning at all, to be honest. I just pretty much stick with the stock Betaflight rates and tunes. If you've ever seen Murder's FPV, I met him a few weeks back and we flew together and it was really fun. And he's actually what inspired me to start doing this challenge because I just want to get better because that dude is unbelievable. But his videos, he doesn't use any stabilization and you could never tell. And it's because he spends the time and he really gets the tune down solid. That's what I want to do more of because his stuff is just buttery smooth. All right, one last thing I want to touch on here is some of the kind of technical spec side of things that we're going to do today just because it's we are going to be flying a little bit farther out probably behind a few more trees farther out than usual so let's let's go into that a little bit first first of all new props you guys are in for a treat here it should help the the shakiness a little bit i hope and maybe that combined with the motion blur will make it look a little bit better a little less shaky that's my hope next thing the VTX power, we will be cranking that up to, I'm going to go with five or 600. I forget which of those my transmitter has, but we're going to be jacking it up a little bit. I typically fly at 200, mostly just because I'm in close proximity stuff. I'm not really too far out. I, it's not really, not really needed typically for me to go much higher. But today we will be doing that because I do not want to lose video way the hell down there and have to go down there to get it that would be terrible and then on the transmitter side we will also be doing that we're going to be going up to 500 milliwatts on that i usually fly at around 100 so it's going to be quite a bit more power again just with the hopes that we don't lose signal because god i really don't want to walk down that mountain that would suck so bad and we're going to fly like right on this little ledge here i think that'll be the best area of reception Whenever you're doing something like this, you really should pay attention to where you are standing, where your antenna is pointed in relation to where you're flying, because it really does matter. So I'm going to be standing on that ledge. I think that'll give me the 
best coverage in this little cone that I'm gonna be trying to fly in here. As far as my antennas for my goggles, what I will be doing today is I'll be doing a patch antenna that's pointed down that way. And hopefully that'll provide me with some pretty good signal on like farther out, maybe when I get into some trees and that type of thing. And then I'm still gonna have the Omni on my goggles too, so that if I do go on like this, this side, if I do go over there, I should still be covered just fine. And I got the rapid fire module, so I'm not too worried about video signal today. I'm honestly more worried about the RC link because R9M is not known for its reliability. I haven't had too many problems with it, but these are the types of things that you would start having problems. Just a word of warning if you're thinking about buying R9M. All right, well, we talked about all the boring stuff, so how about we cue that intro and get into some flying? All right, you guys, that was so much fun today. You know, I really haven't done any long range with my quads before. A lot of people wouldn't consider this long range. It's more of mid range, I guess. You know, th there's just a few limitations of what I can do with my quads since right now they're set up for more of freestyle. So closer, um, they're super, super punchy, even on a 4S. For something meant for long range, there's a lot of people that use like seven inch quads 
There's a couple reasons for that. One is that they're heavy so they don't get blown around by wind. That becomes a factor when you're like mountain surfing or high up on a ridge line, kind of like here, but more exaggerated. And also because they can fit bigger batteries on there, I can only use a 1500 milliamp four cell. That's what I'm using right now. And I mean, I would consider that quite large for my setup too. I know it's underpowered compared to most freestyle rigs, but it's really just not set up for longer range type stuff. So my flight times are really short. I only get about less than three minutes with my GoPro and the 4S battery, especially because in something like this, whenever you're going uphill, which is most of the time, it draws a lot of amps and that just kills your battery. So it's just not, I don't know, it's just not set up for something like this. But if you like this type of flying, check out Falcon Rad FPV and also Shields Up FPV. He lives around where I do, and they both just got some awesome stuff on there. They're both into the long range stuff. It might blow your mind. That's a whole different world of flight that you can get into. Like I said, I just really haven't done a whole lot with quads. I have with airplanes, and I don't know. If you ask me, I like long range with airplanes better because you don't need as much power with an airplane because of the fact that you can glide. If you lose an engine on an airplane, it, it sucks, but you can at least somewhat control it to a place that you can land. If you drop power on a quad, you're you're screwed. Like it's basically just going to drop out of the sky. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff you can get into with long range. Like I said, it's a whole different world. If that interests you, check those two guys out I mentioned. If you're wondering why I didn't really go much past that first ridge line of trees there, it's mostly because I just don't trust my gear enough, to be honest. You really got to trust your stuff when you do long range FPV. You also can't go below um line of sight with your antennas. I mean, you can to a point, but it just gets into that area of I'm not, I'm not comfortable doing that, at least not with this rig. I only have analog. If I had DJI, I might be a little bit more adventurous, but just in case you're wondering from that footage, that's why. But anyways, that was super fun today. I highly recommend just trying different stuff out. This is not the typical thing that I would do, at least with quads. And I'm super glad I came up here and did this because it was a lot of fun. There's nothing quite as awesome as zooming down a mountain at a super steep angle really, really fast. It's just, you can't get that feeling by doing freestyle. It's just not the same. So if you're into this kind of thing, give it a try. There's so many different things you can do with FPV. And it doesn't even have to be drones. Like I mentioned with the fixed wings, that's what I started on. That's all I knew for most of my life. That's a blast too. So just don't be afraid to check stuff out. That, that's what makes this fun. There's so many things in this hobby that you can get into. What I have shown you so far is just a small portion of the stuff that you can do. So just don't be afraid to try new things. But until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. That was a fun one today. If you like this video, drop a like down below. Leave me a comment. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you on the next one.